steps in the design of a pre-stressed, precast bridge beam will vary, of course, depending on the type of structure the beams are used in on, and the type of loads, also the type of codes that you're required to use. However, there are certain typical steps which we'll touch on just briefly today. The first step in the design of any structural element, of course, is to define what loads does that beam, that structural element, need to carry. Once we define those loads, then we are able to produce the load effects. Moment and shear, principally, are what we're concerned about with regard to bridge beams. Now, it is critically important with precast, pre-stressed bridge beams to distinguish between the loads that will be carried by different section properties. So the self-weight of the beam and the weight of any in-situ concrete that will be poured on top of the beam will be carried by the beam alone. That needs to be, those loads and load effects need to be separated from the loads that will be carried by the beam acting compositely with the slab above it or the infill concrete between the beams. The other loading type, the other step of bridge beam design for loads that is slightly unusual for other structural elements is you need to define the load effects, specifically the stresses that will result from differential shrinkage and also from differential temperature. Once you've defined the loads and typically created an analytical model wherein you draw out the load effects, the moments and the shears, we can move on then with designing the pre-stressing pre strand layout and also the links that are required to accommodate the load effects. Generally speaking, the strand layout, the pre-stressing strand layout, the magnitude of force applied, the, the number of strands required, the same magnitude of force is always applied to a specific strand. That does not vary. But the total number of strands required and the position, the location of those strands is typically determined by the stress limit check phase of the design. The stress limit check phase of the design essentially sets a compressive stress limit and a tensile stress limit, which frequently is zero, no tensile stress. And the cumulative stress that you will calculate from the pre-stress itself that's applied, the moment resulting from the eccentricity of the pre-stress, and also the moments applied to the beam, that cumulative added summed stress must fall within the stress limits. That is the first and critical stage of the design of pre-stressed concrete bridge beams and frequently governs the strand layout that is required. However, a critical component of pre-stress design as well is the loss of pre-stress. The loss of pre-stress essentially occurs because what is fundamental to pre-stressing is we stretch out the pre-stressing strands Concrete is cast around in pre-tensioning for precast beams, and the strands are released, thereby applying the compression to the beam and the moment. Now, those strands, think of it, a crude analogy essentially would be a bungee cord. When you stretch out a bungee cord, and if you allow the ends of that bungee cord to move ever slightly towards each other, you will lose some of the force in the cord. So it's similar to pre-stressing strands. We stretch them out, we release, apply the, the stress, the force to the, to the beam, but that force will cause the beam to shrink. Will not to shrink, it will cause the beam to compress slightly, the ends to move. That strain in the beam will cause a loss of pre-stress in the strands themselves. Similarly, shrinkage and creep of the beam itself, typically in the axial direction, will also result in a similar loss of pre-stress. Relaxation of the strands is another source of pre-stress loss. This is another quite large component of the design of pre-stress bridge beams, calculating the pre-stress loss. Generally, an estimated loss is first assumed, a strand layout is created, and then the loss is calculated and fed back into the calculations. Following this, we carry out an ultimate limit state check. For reinforced concrete, this usually governs the design of the beam for flexure. But in pre-stressed beam design, 
the ultimate limit state check, which is the flexural capacity of the beam, is just a check, typically. It typically will not result in a change of the strand layout. Another step in the design of pre-stress bridge beams is the shear design. Shear design is an ultimate limit state check, and the result of the shear design will tell you what links you need, what shear links you are required in the beam. There can also be a torsion design requirement as well, which will also impact upon the lengths that are required in the beam as well. These are the fundamental steps required in the design of a pre-stressed concrete bridge beam. Of course, there are other additional steps that will be required depending upon the code you are using.